All right, everybody. Terrence Pop here with another episode of Live from the Lair. Now, I've got a lot of questions from guys out there in regards to uh, a possible upcoming uh, civil strife conflict that may or may not devolve into a two-way rifle range. Uh, I hope it doesn't, but my ESP is telling me something is going on here. Now, every internal conflict is always different. Okay, there are similarities, but they're not all the same. All right. Uh, and I've been using some examples of smaller countries in South America uh, that have uh, basically imploded for one reason or another. And it is looking like the United States is going to be going down the path of a banana republic here, so... Our current stunning and brave duly elected most popular president ever might have delivered the coup de grace to the republic, but... The first shots were fired by useful idiot vaginuts in sheep's clothing peddling lies and propaganda before our former Kenyan in chief made it legal. Take a stand against the tyranny and get yourself a copy of Surviving Fourth Wave Fleminism today. A link is in the description. All right, now, for those of you that aren't up to speed, uh, Colombia in South America has basically been in a low intensity civil war, civil war from roughly the mid 60s uh, to 2016. Uh, since 2016, uh, there's been some craziness going on. So I don't even know if that uh, ceasefire is still in effect or is it being loosely uh, followed, which, you know, I would probably, you know, on, on the side of caution, I would have to say that. Um, now, I did some counter-drug missions down in South America, and I had to deal with the FARC. All right, there you are, a communist arm, a guerrilla force in Colombia, and... Um, yeah, I mean, those guys are some savage assholes. Uh, they were working for a lot of drug cartels for security for the coca plantations, uh, also as an enforcers. Because, uh, you know, shit ain't free, and communism, though they preach uh, strong game, it never delivers. So at the end of the day, you know, shit ain't free, and you gotta pay for stuff. Here on Wikipedia, it says 64 to present which is 57 years. That's a long ass time. Now I'm trying to get to uh, why it happened. This is gonna seem very familiar to what's going on right now. All right, so in 1964, a low intensity asymmetric warfare between the government of Colombia, far right paramilitary groups and crime syndicates and the far left guerrilla groups such as the Re Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia, and the FARC, and the National Liberation, you know, Army, the ELN. I don't. It's some kind of weird acronym. Okay, and then they have the Popular Liberation Army, and they've all they're all fighting each other. So, it's like five or six different uh, sides, all, you know, fighting for control of the country, and one of the main reasons. They're able to do this for as long as they have is they're in the middle of a jungle and uh, people can simply go out there and disappear. And, you know, if you want to go out and get them, it uh, requires uh, a monumental effort of time, men, and equipment. All right, so they claim these, uh, you know, the far left or the communists, they're fighting uh, the guerrilla movement, claim to be fighting for the rights of the poor in Colombia to protect from the government from government violence and to provide social justice through communism. Let me say that again. Social justice through communism. So are we seeing any parallels here? Uh, for the past <clears throat> year, year and a half, we've had a bunch of people out there uh, going crazy, tearing the whole system down 
and they're justifying it with social justice and democratic socialism, which never works. Yeah, and they've got half over half a century of bloodshed to show for it. Um, to date, I guess they say 220,000 people died. Uh, most of them civilians. 40,787 were, you know, frontline fighters. Which, it's par for the course. Usually civilian casualties are three to five times that of the, of the military casualties. And uh, any military casualties usually find the KIAs and multiply them by two to three, depending upon uh, the country you're facing and the weapon systems used against you, uh, to get your ratios of dead and wounded. I don't know where I knew that from, but uh, I think it, I think that bit of information came from my LERS uh, days when we used to do um, basically effects reports. You know, when they would fire already or blow something up, we have to go out there and measure it and count all the carcasses and so forth, which I hated. Okay, so Colombia is still not doing well. And it has been in the shitter for 57 years. It's basically a failed state. And if not for the drug cartel, there probably wouldn't be any industry in that country whatsoever. All right, now we're going to go on to another one. Uh, the Great Depression of Argentina, 98 to 2002. Okay, now, to date, I don't believe there's been a active civil war in Argentina. Though, between 98 and 2002, they had hyper, several bouts of hyperinflation. They defaulted on the national debt. Um... I believe up to 60% of the country was living under poverty wages in 2001, 2000, between 2001 and 2003. And this is actually the blueprint for the preppers out there because this is what it'll look like here when the same thing happens. Um, you're going to wind up with a huge depression, massive unemployment riots, you know, the government uh, basically fell after it defaulted on its debt. Basically, once they default on their debt, they really can't be counted on to pay their bills. And the currency of that country goes to shit. That's just the way it goes. And more than likely, that's going to happen here. You know, they're talking about the bondholders and some of the other effects that are going on here. Most people don't really care why it happened other than the fact that it, it just happened. But the thing is, is Argentina was, you know, a financially strong country for many years. And it has been in the absolute toilet since 2002. It has slowly pulled itself out, but has stagnated for the past, uh, you know, decade and a half. And, uh, yeah, I'm, with the whole EIU, I don't see them pulling themselves out of this mess anytime soon okay now you know everyone's like hey you know how's it gonna look here in the United States all right now to get a hint of what that uh, look like you have to look at the counties in the United States that voted for Republican because the, the way it looks now that line is being drawn between the Democrats and the Republicans the Democrats are pushing for economic socialism slash communism. And when it gets to a breaking point, you're going to see, you know, something similar to Columbia come up here. It'll be a little more complicated uh, because we're going to have Islam and all kinds of that craziness going on on top of, you know, basically the you know, blue states versus the red states. And, you know, I, here is, you know, my interpretation of how this is going to look here. Now, when and if this goes down, it's going to start here in Texas because, uh, you know, the federal government is going to continue to fail at securing the borders. That is one of the main purposes of a government 
is to protect its citizens and secure its borders. If it's no longer doing that, we're going to get more rumblings from Texas. And since it is in their constitution, uh, I can quite effectively say with confidence that they'll be the first one. Okay, once that goes, uh, you're going to probably have Florida right on its heels, along with these two other states, Louisiana, Mississippi, Oklahoma. And then once that takes effect and you have the, f the first four or five states that have you know, withdrawn from the United States, you're going to see it basically go all the way across the United States and cut the west coast from the east coast okay now we're not taking into effect there are whole areas in these states here that want to actually move and be counted by another state now once this happens there's going to be nothing that's going to keep these counties from basically D.D. Mowing and cutting their allegiance to the state they were attached to previously. Uh, you're going to see similar things in Michigan. Uh, Michigan is held by Detroit, Grand Rapids, Lansing, and I think that's about it um, that are historically crazy Democrat, but the rest of the state is red. You're going to see a similar phenomenon take place here with a lot of counties. All right, you're, we are all of these ones here. Uh, you're going to have a lot of the same thing because, except for New York City, virtually the entire state of New York is a Republican patriot. They love this country, you know. So you're going to, as this progresses, you're going to see large portions of uh, these states basically fall away. Now, the number 38 and 36 keeps coming into mind. I have no idea how those numbers are going to play into this. Okay. But once this happens, you know, once the, you know, it, it goes across the United States to this extent, I can, ver I can see parts of Canada getting on board because there's uh, some provinces in Canada that want to leave the country of Canada because of their liberal in uh irresponsible spending policies yeah so once this happens you're going to see a lot of these other states capitulate um now i don't know how long this will take if it'll be done peacefully uh, or it'll actually result to uh you know some some violence which i'm envisioning i'm envisioning when this happens the federal government coming in and trying to, uh, you know, seize cities within Texas or some of the other states. And, you know, they're going to get shut down pretty hard. You know, and in the meantime, you know, we're going to have hyperinflation, shortages of virtually everything. The sick and infirm are going to start dying because that's the way shit works. And we're going to be wide open for uh, either invasion or, you know, getting our asses handed to us uh, in another portion, you know, of the world. I'm not going to go into that. And we all know what's going on over there. Uh, but, th th I mean, this is pretty much what I'm seeing. Okay. Um, yeah, the only powerhouses, you know, that are left once this happens... Uh, will be New York City, a couple of these states here on the west, uh, I mean on the east coast. You can see a lot of these other uh, states in here either um, go neutral or um, vote to not be included in the, the craziness that their state is doing. Uh, you'll have California over here. Now, California, I mean... Oh, what do they actually produce? Not too much. Uh, a lot of the industry over the past, you know, 30 or 40 years has moved south. Um, 
so that imbalance that you know you had in the first civil war uh, between the industry and a large majority of the people being in the north and not so much in the south that's going to go away all right so i mean this is this is basically you know what i'm seeing here and it's kind of terrifying and this is starting to come into um you know into the national conscious consciousness because I believe there was a poll and it averaged it out between the conservatives, the liberals, the Democrats, and the Republicans and the independents. And the average is 37, almost 38% of the people in this country think it's time to break it up. Okay, that is a high number. When that gets around 50, you're going to start seeing shit start moving. All right, and that's relatively soon. You know, the installed dictator that we have and the craziness that went on in the ice cream social, that's just the tip of the iceberg. All right. And another thing that's going to aid in this, you know, vast separation is our own Supreme Court turned its back on several of these states who brought a case against another state to the Supreme Court and they responded, they don't have any standing. Okay, so you are being, they're taxing, passing laws, enforcing their will upon a state that doesn't even have standing within its own, uh, you know, ju judicial system. There it is. All right. Hopefully, uh, you guys, uh, this is working out. This is a new format here, so I'll talk to you later. <laughs>